Okay, uh, today, uh, in this session, uh, June Park is going to present on the transnationalization of Korea's dominant capital and its differential accumulation in the post-97 period. Uh, June Park uh, works for uh, the Global Political Economy Institute, and I believe he was Jonathan Nitsan's first PhD student. Is that correct? One of the first. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm June. Um, today's presentation is um, based on a part of my PhD dissertation, which uh, I am still working on. My dissertation is about the emergence and development of a capitalist power in Korea over the past half century. Today, um, I'm going to focus on the radical neoliberal distortion of the Korean political economy since the 1997 Korean financial crisis. Uh, the purpose of my presentation is to point out the nature of this rapid social restructuring, both qualitative and quantitative, from a viewpoint of capitalist power. Uh, let me skip. Um, my presentation is organized around the following three arguments. First, the canal of the post-1997 restructuring is the establishment of capitalization as the creator of Korean society. Second, the nature of Korea's globalization is the incorporation of its dominant capital into the global structure of absentee ownership through the transnationalization of ownership and accumulation. Lastly, the reduction of greenfield investment relative to the pre-1997 period is to be explained by the shift of the regime of differential accumulation. Um, let me begin with the Korean financial crisis in 1997. Koreans uh, conceived the crisis as the worst social disaster since the Korean War of 1950. In the aftermath of the crisis, Hundreds of thousand businesses, including many Jebel groups. Jebel, by the way, is the conglomerate, Korean conglomerate, is the um, counterpart of the Japanese Zaibatsu, uh, went bankrupt. Vir virtually all commercial banks were bailed out, and about one million workers lost their jobs. In the wake of the crisis, Korean society um, undertook radical neoliberal reforms such as trade and capital account liberalization, banking sector deregulation, corporate governance reform, and the labor market reform. While there is a general consensus that Korean society after the 1997 crisis is not the same as before, heated debates on the cause of the 1997 crisis and the nature of the change are still going on. Development economists have led the debate. To put it in a nutshell, they argue that the subordination of productive domestic um, industrial capital to unproductive foreign financial capital has resulted in a shift from high economic growth with a high investment to a low economic growth model with a low investment. It is also held that um, foreign capital is the culprit of polarized growth in the post-crisis period. Polarized growth means basically that um, although the Korean economy rapidly recovered from the crisis, its benefits did not trickle down at all, and thereby the post-1997 restructuring intensified social inequality in Korea. Thus, development economies demand the Korean government to protect the Korean jebels and to toughen regulations on foreign capital. I don't think that um, diagnosis of Korean capitalism made by development economists are entirely wrong, but their explanations are handicapped by problematic notions of capital. I think that they confuse the difference between industrial capital and financial capital with the difference between industry and business in the Babylonian sense. Industrial capital is an, as unproductive as financial capital. From a func functionalist viewpoint, you may distinguish the financial sector from industrial sector. However, we focus 
if, if we focus on the origin of uh, profit, there is no difference between financial capital and industrial capital. Mm. Capitalist earnings are legal claims on the basis of property ownership, and uh, the earnings are determined not by the productivity of each industry they control, but by their power over the whole social process. Both financial capital and industrial capital, by controlling key aspects of uh, the holistic process of production and reproduction, respectively claim their share of the social wealth pie. In my view, the rapid industrialization of the Korean economy, the 1997 economic crisis, and the, the so-called polarized growth in the wake of the crisis can be better understood from the perspective of capitalist power. Um, to put in a nutshell, my approach to the long-term development of Korean capitalism can be illustrated like the diagram quoted from Lizan and Bickler's writing. I mean, supposing all of you are familiar with um, Lizan and Bickler's theory of capital, I skip the details of the diagram. But um, my view, rapid industrialization, and the economic crisis of 1997 crisis, <coughs> And the polarized growth in its wake has moved along with the curve, which is shaped by the dynamics of uh, strategic sabotage or capitalist power of uh, social exclusion. The two cities in the chart symbolically shows the differential accumulation of uh, the Korean dominant capital through rapid industrialization. One is the ratio between the net profit of the Samsung Group and the Korea's nominal GDP. It has increased about 60 fold from 1969 to 2010. During the same period, Samsung's net profit relative to corporate average has risen more than 500 fold. In my view, it is um, differential sabotage that enables the Korean table's mind-boggling success in differential accumulation. At the early stage, the military dictatorship played a crucial role in the concentration and centralization of the Korean tables. Protectionist uh, policies enabled them to monopolize domestic markets. Suppressive labor policies helped them maintain a pro production system characterized by low wages and long working hours. Furthermore, the state provided dominant capital with various types of financial support, such as um, tax reductions, preferential interest rates and exchange rates, direct subsidies, and exclusive access to foreign loans. All, all of them are typical examples of differential sabotage. By the end of the 1980s, these bases for the Jebel's differential accumulation were severely undermined. First, as the global shift of accumulation focus from depth to breadth, coupled with the transition from the Cold War to globalization, Korea's protectionist measures are not allowed any longer. Second, the fall of the military dictatorship shifted the balance of power among various social groups not only between capital and labor, but also within the power elite group. Korean Jebels faced strong class struggles led by organized labor unions. Third, the breast regime pursued by the Jebels reached its limits. In other words, long-term greenfield investment has begun to create downward pressure on profits. Um, I will skip. This is about um, the breast regime of uh, Korean Jebel, but I, 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 let me skip this. But in the following um, for chat, I'll show you some empirical ground for my arguments on the 1997 crisis. Yet, um, because of the time limits, uh, let me scan through this part. If you have any question, I'll return to this part in discussion time. Just. Uh, I ask you to look at the general trends. The first chart shows um, that Korea's economic growth slowed down 
as the surplus labor in the countryside was depleted. I used uh, as a proxy the urban population growth for the depletion of uh, surplus labor. The, the second chart shows that the slowdown of GDP growth in turn coincided with the downturn of uh, the corporate share of national income. The third chart shows that um, as the initial impetus for overall expansion of the economy was weakened, Korea's uh, dominant capital also seems to have had difficulty in increasing its share. I divided um, 30 several groups into two um, sectors, and top four and the others. And as you can see from the chart, except top four jebels, co uh, most Korean jebel groups' share of national income decreased during the 1990s. Uh, coming to the 1997 crisis. It's, um, yeah, the first chart shows that the relatively shrinking profit share of the Korean dominant capital, as you saw before, was due to the inner limits of a breast regime. Since the early 1990s, the ongoing expansion of the differential employment by Korea's dominant capital was uh, accompanied with uh, stagnation and decline of its uh, differential profit for employee. That is uh, debts. This. Um, After the crisis, yeah, I, I will, yeah, turn to next next part of my presentation about the, the, the post crisis period. Crisis in Chinese means um, danger and opportunity at the same time. Indeed, the 1997 crisis provide the Korean dominant capital with good opportunities for the consolidation of its power and over the redistribution of social wealth. The chart shows the recovery of the power of capital in general in the post-1997 period. While GDP growth has decelerated, the corporate share of national income has rapidly increased. It has more than tripled from 4.2% in 2000 to 13.8% in 2010. This, uh, this about distribution of social rest is, uh, I think, uh, led by Korea's dominant capital. It can be verified by the following two analysis of the concentration of uh, corporate profits. One is the index of aggregate concentration based on net profit, which measures the percentage share of the Korean jebels um, in the relevant uh, corporate universe. The other is the index of differential concentration, which represents the ratio between the average net profit of the jebels and the average net profit of all corporations. Let me show you one by one. Um, this chart. The chart shows that aggregate concentration of net profit the denominator is the aggregate net profit of all corporations on the national income accounts. I summarize the figures. The rising levels of uh, aggregate concentration after the 1997 crisis are mind-boggling. Over the 10 years <laughs> between 1987 and 1996, on average, Samsung top four and top 30 jebels accounted for 4.4%, 10.7%, and 14.7% respectively. The 10 years average of their shares increased to 17.1%, 34.2%, and 55% respectively during 2000 through 2010. 
differential concentration of net profit shown in the chart is uh, far more alarming than aggregate concentration. I'll show these uh, numbers. Um, as you can see from the table, the differential profits of top four and top 30 tables. Um, first, um, the differential profit of uh, top four tables increased 25 fold between 1990 and 2009. Over the same period, the differential profit of top 30 as a whole increased 22 fold. As I mentioned earlier, the 1997 crisis was partly caused by the downward pressure on differential profit of the Korean dominant capital, which in turn resulted from long-term greenfield investment. The chart shows that Korea's devils overcome the problem successfully. The chart plus the average profit per employee of the top 30 devils in comparison with that of manufacturing. As illustrated in the chart, the profit for employee of both dominant capital and the manufacturing has increased significantly after the 1997 crisis. Yeah, as you can see from the table, the ratio between the profit for employee of the top 30 tables and that of the manufacturing average um, increased by 54% during the two periods. Polarized growth in the post-1997 crisis is to be, I think, better in, in understood as the differential accumulation of the Korean dominant capital. The indicators of polarized, polarized growth, such as the decrease of fixed capital investment, um, the increase of job insecurity through flexible labor, and the intensifying unfair practice of the jebel against the small and medium-sized companies are, I think, part of the Korean jebel strategies for universal and differential industrial sabotage. Korean jebels seem to be the culprit of the polarized growth in the post-1997 period, yet um, they are not what they used to be. The 1997 crisis brought about substantial changes in the nature of the jebels as well as the Korean political economy. The huge inflows of foreign capital accompanying the radical reform of liberali liberalization and deregulation restructured the power relations in Korea. The influx of uh, foreign investment into Korea resulted in a rapid expansion of its financial markets, which in turn turned uh, uh, capitalist power more vendable. At the same time, as ownership is increasingly transnationalized, Korea's um, mode of power is incorporated into the transnational mega machine of accumulation. Consequently, more and more state functions are taken over and controlled by the transnationalized dominant capital. Korean society becomes increasingly responsive to the rise and fall of global financial capital. Let me show you these um, changes with some quantitative analysis. The chart shows the annual net inflows of foreign investment expressed as percentage share of gross fixed capital formation and the market value of gross foreign assets relative to Korea's do nominal GDP. As a consequence of the sharp increase in net inflows of foreign investment, between 1994 and 2009, the market value of foreign assets as a percentage share of Korea's nominal GDP has more than tripled from 26% to 87%. The huge inflow of foreign investment led to the fast expansion of Korea's financial markets. As we can see from the chart, over the 20 years, since Korea opened its stock markets to foreign investors, the size of the market uh, relatively measured by the ratio of total market capitalization to Korea's nominal GDP 
has grown more than 2.5 fold from 31% in 1991 to 84% in 2001. The bond market also expanded at a similar pace. The rapid expansion of Korea's financial markets coupled with the enormous inflows of foreign investment is to be understood as part of the transnationalization of ownership and accumulation. Since the early 1990s, the national identity of Korean corporations, especially of the core business group, gradually melted away. By the early 2000s, it was no longer possible to refer to the dominant capital as Korean. As we can see from the chart, um, in 1991, foreign ownership accounted for only 3.3% of the Korean stock market in terms of market capitalization. By 2004, the value of the foreign ownership increased to 42% of the market total. The foreign share of the listed corporations belonging to the top 10 jebels is higher than the average. At its peak 2000 in uh, 2005, the foreign ownership accounted for 47%. The high level of foreign ownership in the banking sector symbolically shows the transition from state capitalism to market capitalism. By the early 1980s, virtually all the Korean banking sector was under state control. Now the, the banking sector as a whole is in the hands of foreign investors. As of 2011, the foreign share of seven major com commercial banks accounted for about 60%. Um, in the rest of my presentation, uh, I'm going to show some empirical analysis which provide a glimpse into the nature of uh, Korea's neoliberal globalization. At, at the same time, we put development economist arguments. Development economists um, basically hold that foreign investors um, pursuing nothing but short-term profits and high dividend income would drain out a huge amount of uh, national wealth and severely weaken Korea's economy, economic growth. It is true, but they ig ignore the opposite side. I argue that the neoliberal globalization does not fit into the macro statist framework any longer. The transnationalization of uh, ownership makes it harder to talk about national interest itself. The benefits of globalization have to be analyzed in terms of the differential accumulation of capital in, instead of uh, national interest. The first chart shows that Korea has become one of the major net capital exporters among emerging markets during the 2000s. Over the last 10 years, Korea's net capital inflows flows, averaged $18 billion per year. The ch second chart shows that the balance of Korea's investment income account has been improved since the 1997 crisis, not aggravated. The third chart shows that foreigners' investing income as a whole after the 1997 crisis measured relatively to Korea's GDP is smaller than before, before the crisis. So it, it's not increased. It has been decreased, actually. The first chart shows that the tendency of dividend income distribution relatively, to, uh, rel relatively measured to net profit and market value has decreased rather than increased since, the, since Korea opened its, opened its market. Contrary to the arguments made by the advocates, of national corporatism. Korea has turned out to be a beneficiary rather than a victim of neoliberal globalization. I'm not saying that Korea's uh, national interest has been promoted by liberalization. Rather, the point is that the advocates of national corporatism fell short of grasping the nature of globalization. In my opinion, the transnationalization of ownership and accumulation, which makes it no longer possible to talk about national interest, let alone I mean, domestic capital. I think that the nature of Korea's globalization is the establishment of capitalization, ritual as the 
primary social norm, Korea um, ruling capitalists like their global counterpart come to see the world through the lens of capitalization formula. This is the essence of Korea transition to free market capitalism. That's my argument. So I'll just quickly show the chat um, support my argument. That this chart shows that expansion of the stock market coincides with the massive differential capitalization of the core business group. So for example, in the early 1980s, the differential capital capitalization of the top three corporations, it includes uh, Samsung Electronics and Hyundai Motors and po Fosco, was only five. At its peak in 2009, the, their average market value amounted to 72 times higher than the market average. The major travel groups as a whole also seem to successfully capitalize neoliberal globalization. The differential accumulation of the top 10 jabber groups increased from 19 to 48 during the period. It is the jabber families more than anyone else that have benefited from this differential accumulation. The market value of the stocks possessed by the primary owners, that is the jabber families as a whole, has increased from uh, yeah, about 30-fold over the last decade. Um, last one. In addition, in addition to huge capital gains, the primary owners of the top 10 jabbers have also earned enormous dividend income in post-1997 period. The dividend income of the primary owners of the top 10 jabber groups has kept growing through the 2008 global crisis. Their dividend income rose from 31 billion Korean won in 2001 to um, 178 billion Korean won in 2011, a six-fold increase compared to the dividend income of 2001. So yeah, I will leave it there. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'd uh, now like to invite questions from the audience. So was the was the 97 crisis then uh did it simply s provide an opportunity to reverse this differential misfortune or did the differential misfortune drive the chebol owners managers to provoke the crisis mm -hmm. um I it's okay, yeah, okay. To a large degree, yeah, several groups um, have had a responsibility for the 1997 crisis. But um, in the restructuring process, they actually um, gained more power than lost uh, their power. Can you, can you talk about some of the actual mechanisms that led to, that, that they put into place that resulted in the crisis and then the mechanisms that they used to improve their fortunes coming out of the crisis? Uh, I mean, in my, I explained a little bit about the development um, economists. Yeah, they are, they um, are very critical about the government uh, and the Jebel strategy for globalizing the ownership of the Jebel. They, they think that um, it is um, selling national interest to the foreign financial capital. So they are very critical about the strategy. But it, it was not predetermined. But I mean, in, in hindsight, the strategy was very um, beneficial to the Jebel groups. They uh, sold um, many, uh, much of their ownership to foreign investors, and that actually boosted the financial markets. And also, it was a good opportunity for the Jebel families to revaluate their, the, 
the value of uh, the, their assets. Before the um, Korean mark, the financial markets was not opened to the foreigners. You, it was not actually possible to evaluate uh, how v valuous uh, um, their assets are. But after the financial market expanded and foreign investors uh, participated in uh, Korea's uh, financial market, they have their values. <laughs> so it was yeah, good opportunity in that sense for several owners. So they taken on a, a lot of money and then their ownership had a, um, a, can be assessed in a global terms. Yeah, that's the, I think, it, it, the opportunity that several families had yeah, through the 1997 can I, crisis. Can I just ask one more thing and just kind of clarifying? So then when the financial markets opened, did the tables kind of use that as an opportunity to sort of assess where they were, see that kind of trouble loomed, and then in transferring the ownership, sort of left these foreign investors who were supposedly, you know, destroying kind of the national identity, did they kind of then leave them holding the bag? Like, were the, were the former owners kind of laughing all the way to the bank because when the crisis came, they weren't the ones who paid the price? That was, uh, yeah. <laughs> Popular mind yeah, was um, very critical about their family's uh, management of uh, the corporations. But it was the Jebel and the government uh, uh, officials who ran the course. And I, I, I cannot say that uh, it was um, from the beginning, from the very beginning, it was um, yeah, the, the, all the, the restructuring process was organized for several families. I mean, I'm not saying th this way, but anyway, they um, exerted their power over the process, and uh, the government officials are very friendly with um, several families, and Zebels also have a very active strategy for restructuring the, their governance. So on one hand, they sold their ownership, I mean, a part of their ownership to foreigners. On the other hand, they um, strengthened circular ownership in order to protect the managerial power, their managerial power over the whole group. So th in this way, th um, they... Um, what, how did say that? Gained the two balls with one stone. Yeah, uh, they saved their the groups, which was on the brink of the collapse in the 1997 crisis, and they saved. Uh, on the other hand, they kept their managerial power over the group. So that's the devil strategy, and it was successful. Yeah. Can you to Sean first? Yeah, thanks for a very uh, <laughs> compelling presentation, with lo lots of compelling graphs and so on. Um, but some of the qualitative stories we could pick up on that, that Troy was alluding to is that uh, the, the chaibol, and especially you know, the, the top chaibol, so you said there's thousands, so the top chaibol in particular um, supported the IMF uh, liberalization uh, structural adjustment programs in, in November, December 1997, because it was only after then that they could uh, transnationalize and, and expand abroad. Right, so before that, the, the Korean state had, had very heavy c restrictions on, 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 foreign, on outward foreign investment as well, right? not only inward foreign investment. But an, another story, um, you talk about foreign ownership, but it's really American ownership. Right? So from 1997 to 2010, over 50% of mergers and acquisitions of a value of a million dollars or higher were from American firms. And of Samsung, for example, is over 30% American owned. Hyundai, I can't remember exactly, it's like 20% or something. And the qualitative story in November, December again, is that, so you know, the, the Hilton Hotel in, in downtown Seoul, so the IMF and the US Treasury booked the entire floor, 10th floor or whatever, of the Hilton Hotel, and together they devised the structural adjustment program. And one of the things that US Treasury was very adamant about is that, you got to liberalize your financial markets and your automobile sector. And so sure enough, GM and Ford came in as well. And, and also some of the Japanese conditionality was that uh, South Korea had to um, 
remove its restrictions on imports of Japanese magazines and J-pop and, and so on as well as a condition of, of the IMF. So anyway, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of qualitative stories to, to tell with, the, with your compelling graphs. But one of the things you said towards the end is that you think that there's, there's no basis for a, a domestic Korean capitalist class or, or a, a Korean national interest because it's, it's transnationalized now. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so I, I was I was gonna challenge you about, uh, on I that see. because, um, as you yourself said, you know the families still have very tight control of the of the top chaebols. You know, all even though Samsung is over thirty percent American owned. I mean, the I forgot the guy's name, but I mean the the grandson of the founder is still you know the the number one guy in control out of all the Samsung subsidiaries and so on. Yeah. And that the tight relationship with the Korean developmental state is still very much there, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, there is a discrepancy between the mindset of the ruling class and the, the mindset, I mean, popular mind. So in my view, I mean, not only in Korea, but also the, the worldwide, the, the mindset of um, the ruling class is transnationalized, but popular mind isn't. They, stick to still stick to national identity so i don't i don't argue that um popular mind is um, entirely um, transnationalized but i was talking about the argument of uh, the development economists they keep talking about national interest mm -hmm. and they try to identify capital in terms of nationality. That's um, what I was trying to criticize. But so, yeah. Isn't the national interest the interest of those dominant families who are the dominant owners of the dominant chaebol in, in South Korea? I don't identify the interest of the chaebol with um, national interest. OK. <laughs> Yes. I mean, and from the uh, perspective you, of power, said, yeah, not from the perspective of, of thirty percent of American ownership. As a whole, about sixty percent of Samsung is owned by foreigners. Then how can you say national interest when you talk about Samsung's profit? Sixty percent of dividend is going to. In, in the hands of the foreigners. So Actually, since two thousand eight, it's it's gone. It's but gone I'm down still now. People, Korean people think of um, Samsung as the pride of uh, Koreans. Yeah, that's the contradiction we have at the moment. I was talking about that point. Yeah. Uh, just a question about. Uh, I know you did show a lot of really interesting graphs, but um, two figures I think before this one, uh, there was one where you had differential capitalization of the top three chaebols. And then you had another one, and it seemed to be a tight correlation, and you called it expansion of market or expansion of markets. And you actually had two asterisks beside expansion of markets. Now, I know if you publish this or if you put it in a paper, you would have a longer explanation. But could you maybe just give a quick explanation of what that actually was measuring? The second one, expansion of markets. Okay. That's some um, expansion of market, yeah? No, no, you Not have this one. This one? Yes. It's a stock market expansion in terms of um, the, 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 the cap capitalization, market capitalization to GDP. So mm -hmm. I was trying to show that the expansion of uh, the stock market is actually um, and coincided with uh, the differential capitalization of the dominant capital. That's what I'm trying to show through this um, chart. So just to maybe unpack that a bit more, how do you actually just then do that calculation just for someone? Like I, I've never done something oh, like I that, see. so. I mean, there is an average of a market capitalization of the three <coughs> companies. No, no, no. Divided sorry, by I, the first one? Or? 
No, I'm not talking about the, the dark black line. I'm talking about the dotted one that says expansion of market, and then you, you have oh, two I asterisks see. beside it. I it divided the, the total market capitalization of the Korean stock market by GDP. So I try to show the relative expansion of the financial market in oh. Korea. Yeah. Okay, thank you. okay, we've got about five minutes left. Yeah, I, I have a, a question uh, which is more general in nature about uh, comparing what happened in Korea to uh, many other uh, countries in the region. Uh, I think it's, it's well established that there was a crisis in uh, Southeast Asia happening in 1997. It was not a Korean crisis, it was a, a regional crisis or whatever, what it, uh, whatever it was, it was regional rather than just Korean. So I think to begin with, uh, it might be useful, although your uh, work is on Korea proper, to at least think in terms of uh, uh, some sort of a comparative study, uh, at, in terms of highlights at least, what was similar between Korea and the rest of the region? Mm -hmm. So how the crisis actually is a universal thing that hit the region? Mm -hmm. And secondly, and perhaps more, more interesting, and that ties into the question of whether the Chabel triggered the crisis. It would be uh, possible if the crisis started in Korea and spread to the rest of the region, mm. it's possible that it was triggered by the Chabel, though personally I don't think that was the case. But mm. if it was a regional crisis, and especially if it started elsewhere, uh, it, it lent itself to the supposition that it wasn't a Korean crisis, but a, a general one. And secondly, in terms of the consequences, because you spent a lot of time panning out the way in which the ruling class in Korea in general and the Chebo in particular uh, struggle with the crisis and how to turn this into uh, something in their benefit and what they uh, sort of created out of it and how they managed to, on the one hand, uh, concentrate and differentially accumulate, but at the same time, uh, transnational, their ownership, and it's very difficult now to speak of those institutions as Korean. They are, their structure is certainly at the top of the level of society is much more transnational. Mm -hmm. So this is not really a question, un unless you have something to say about it, but it's a proposition that it would be useful to uh, demonstrate that to what extent Korea is special or to what extent Korea is not special relative to the rest of the region. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you say that in Korea, say 30% of the market is now owned by so-called foreigners and the top four or whatever table are owned 80% or 40 or whatever by foreigners, what will be the comparable numbers in other countries to establish whether Korea is in any ways an outlayer uh, or, or is it conforming with the norm? And that will have uh, a much more powerful implication in terms of the finding of that study to, mm -hmm. to extend beyond Korea proper. So if you want to comment on it, that will be interesting. But if not, this is something worthwhile actually pursuing, not as a full-fledged study, but just as a highlight. Thanks. OK. I will not comment on <laughs> your comment. <laughs> Thanks for your comment. <laughs> OK, we've got enough time for one more question. OK, Jeffrey. Yes, it's also a comment following uh, Jonathan. You see, I. I don't, maybe Korea was a special case in the region, but it wasn't a special case in the world. This same story you can repeat in Argentina, you can repeat even in Venezuela before Chavez, you can repeat uh, all over Africa, for example. Exactly the same story. And of course, the similarity is not only it's the American Treasury, but it's the IMF, remember, which is an interstate organization. And so the interstate organization was bringing to Seattle the whole of the global elite, which was determined to do that what has been done, which leads me to the so do not, and I indeed believe that this was the apogee of the, of, of, of the global elite power around about 2003. It's wavered since that time. And one of the reasons it's wavered since that time, and that's why I don't think you should be so pessimistic about the possibility of a restoration of a, a policy of national interest oh, because see. it has been done in Latin America and it possibly will occur in Thailand and elsewhere. It's just a comment. Okay, thank you. No. <laughs> that brings to an end our session. Thank you.